Hey, hey, welcome into the PHNX Cardinals podcast brought to you by the DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top rated sportsbook app. Be sure to like, subscribe, leave us a five star review wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Johnny Venerable. He's Bo, Bo Brock, the great Frank Sanders, number 81. We're live, gentlemen, here, Four Peaks, downtown Tempe. How are we feeling on this Wednesday? I'll be your bro. I'll be bro Brock. I also got my bro Frank Sanders back <laughs> on the pod today. Excited about that. Our playmaker talking about a big time career playing the wide receiver position in the NFL. We're going to c- celebrate another one of those guys who we wore are. the Arizona Cardinals uniform. Uh, it's exciting. The Arizona Cardinals, like that 53-man roster, Johnny, we've actually got a, a way better I- idea of what it's going to look like going forward in- instead of what we saw yesterday. It was a lot of uh, roster maneuvering, yeah. right? So. We'll Frank, get into it. Frank, we're going to get into it. The hodgepodge putting together a 53-man roster. You thankfully never had to worry about that, Mr. Second-round pick. I had to worry about it every year. No, That's I don't why believe I worked that at all. my butt off. I wanted to make the team. Nah, I never had to worry about it. <laughs> once you make the first uh, – look, once you impress Buddy Ryan and then you go out and put up a rookie of the year receiver. That's right. You know, stats, yeah. then you basically you kind of prove yourself. And after that, every year I just want to continually get better. I'm at my craft and try to make make sure that the Arizona Cardinals are winning. The what? night before final cutdown day, he was ten toes up, just sleeping like a baby, no problem, not losing any sleep over not, whether or not his I've, roster spots you, in jeopardy. Well, here's what happens: once you go through rookie camp, you kind of get a very good idea at that moment. But what's more important is once you go through veteran camp, then you get a chance to really see where you are in the competition. Did you handle that well? Could you handle the pressure well? Um, what what they threw at you? Did you did you accomplish that situation? And then you put yourself in rotation with the rest of the guys, and they start telling you, you're number one, you're not number two. And once you become number one, it's hard to lose that gig. One thing you had to be sure of, you had to have enough cornerbacks on the roster to cover Frank mm. Sanders and company. And the Arizona Cardinals are doing just that here in 2022. Yesterday, we got the news, Bo Brock, that they traded for former Las Vegas Raider Trayvon Mullen. He is not with the Cardinals yet on the ground. Uh, you were at practice today, no Trayvon. But then another move happened today through the waiver wire, mm-hmm. former New York Jet, now Arizona Cardinal, another cornerback. Let me make sure I'm getting his you name correct. It. Javelin Gidry? Javelin Gidry played 28 games for Gang Green over the last two seasons. If you watch Pac-12 football, you saw him play for Utah. He was a solid corner for the Utes back in the day. He played five starts or started five games for the Jets as well. Just has experience. I mean, in his to make way for Gidry, they had to cut Christian Matthew, somebody who we watched extensively in training camp. He played well in the preseason, but unfortunately, you know, the seventh-round pick out of Valdosta State, the Arizona Cardinals value 28 games of experience yeah. over a guy coming from I don't even know what the hell conference Valdosta State's in, but it's a little bit it's a little bit uh, less competitive than the NFC West, my guys. Look, Gridry's going to be 100% happy. Yeah. You know why? Because he's leaving a losing team and coming to a winning <laughs> team. Oh, wow. Off the top, without a doubt, he knows that his players, he knows who his playmakers are. He can look over at the defensive guy on his offensive side of the ball and yeah. say, I don't have to work as hard as I had to. I won't, I won't be playing 97 snaps a game like I was doing with the Jets because our quarterback play wasn't there. I'll be probably about 76, 75. That's a, that's a good number for a defense doing a, doing a football game. And right now, he comes here with the Cardinals. He know offensively, we're good. What do I What do I bring to the defense? And that's what he has to figure out. Yeah, he was one of, I think, seven Jets that were claimed today. It's wild for yeah. how bad that team wow. is. Supposedly, they had a, a lot of unearthed talent, and the Cardinals were the benefactor of that. So this will be Gidry's third year in the NFL. He comes from Utah. He's undersized, 5'9", 5'10", slot corner, special teamer, kind of in the mold of Chase, Jace Whitaker, who is now on the practice mm-hmm. squad. So the Cardinals are slowly but surely filling out that cornerback group. And, Bo, you think about where this team was 40 hours ago to now. <laughs> yeah. Are they better, in your opinion? Do you think they've improved, or is it just like kind of aimlessly biding time before you face Patrick Mahomes and company? They're, they're significantly better, just by numbers, right? I mean, it, that group was thinner and then is about as thin as in an NFL roster could possibly get at that position. It was Byron Murphy, it was Marco Wilson, guys that you can hang your hat on that could play snaps in this league. And then beyond that, I mean, it was, as we mentioned, Christian Matthew, Antonio Hamilton, we're still, we don't know what's going on with the guy who, yeah. you know, Cliff Kingsbury said won that job. So it's it's encouraging to see guys who have played big snaps in this league make their way onto the roster for the bare minimum. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're seeing a late conditional round pick come over, you know, go to Vegas for Mullen, 
who I like. I mean, Frank, he's 6'2". He's yeah. 200 pounds, ran a 4'4'6", four, four, played at Clemson, gave up no touchdowns in less than 300 yards in his final season. You got to like that, you know, the potential there. Still has to develop, but a press corner, you know, Cliff King Kingsbury said today that they like that profile. Look, the, the size, I like the size of it. I like what he brings to the table. Look, he comes from Coconut Creek, Florida, not that far from Fort Lauderdale, wow. Florida. So he's a southern boy. But not only that, though, he's not that far from where Pat P played at as well. As well. Damn, okay. And so, look, he's had the opportunity to really go against good, a lot of good athletes. Mm -hmm. He knows what he needs to bring to the table. But he has to learn how to play NFL football and how to be that guy. Of course, there has been a knock on him that he does grab a little bit. But that's just young. You give him a, give him a little while to figure some things out. I like, I like the makeup of what we just brought to the table. Another young person that can grow into this system and allow ourselves to have some depth at that position. Mike Mayer is in the chat. I watched Frank growing up. He was my favorite all-time card during that time, and I pretend to be him at recess. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's what I want to hear. Uh, Frank Sanders at recess catching a fade, catching an out route. Love to see that. <laughs> this is interesting. We hadn't heard this, so we're, we're going to just uh, take your word for Elowan 5. Uh, rumor is Hamilton, Antonio Hamilton, who right now is MIA. He's not on injured reserve, but presumably the Cardinals' number two or three cornerback isn't at practice. According to somebody in the chat, Bo, mm -hmm. have you heard this? He burned himself with cooking oil? Had you heard this being the case? No, I haven't heard that. Okay. Yeah, let's, uh, I, I don't know, let's pump the brakes. If, if that's a legitimate source, our guy, I think his name, our guy Brian in the chat, yeah. he goes by that username. Uh, interesting, yeah. Give us a source on that. Well, it, Not the full source, but where you're hearing that. I, I just hadn't heard that. I've been around the facility, you know, since he's been gone and hadn't heard that. Well, you know, it kind of maybe adds up when you think about it. he's gone to the doctor, but they don't disclose his injury until next week when they have to, when the practice reports come out. But he did not travel to Tennessee. We just hope Antonio Hamilton's okay because he's had a heck of a summer. Cliff Kingsbury, Bo Brock, told you today yeah. the three MVPs of preseason training camp, Antonio Hamilton, Greg Dorch, which no surprise, no surprise. and how about this, Frank Sanders, Andy Isabella yeah. on that MVP list. Yeah, there was a lot of discussion about Andy Isabella. At least there has been the last two days since he you know, locked up that roster spot. And, Frank, you know, I don't know what you saw from him in the preseason, but he was a monster over 200 yards receiving. He had the three PI penalties that he drew. And Kingsbury wasn't like, hey, this guy's just, like we've been saying, he's not there to just fill out a roster spot. He's not there just for de depth. They feel like he's there this time around in his fourth season to be to make plays. I don't know how, like, how that's going to come about. You know, you don't have DeAndre Hopkins, right. but still, there, there's a ton of guys on the depth chart. Could it be via, you know, Rondell Moore being injured? Yeah, we heard a little bit about that. about that. You know, he's day to day at this point. He was on the practice field with Jonathan Ward, kind of working out on the side. But yeah, Andy Isabella, you know, Cliff Kingsbury, who's who's been in his corner, and sure, I'm sure he's been in his doghouse for the last couple seasons because of lack of production. But they think that hey, he made the team because he's going to make plays for this team. If you feel like that's naive at this point, I don't think that you're wrong with that. I'll, like you have to prove it at this point. We've got some exciting news guys, that we want to announce. Guys, I'm just going to interrupt you right now. You're going to interrupt me? <laughs> I'm going to interrupt How you. How dare you interrupt just, Andy I just, Isabella, Tom? I just want you to know anytime <laughs> I shump up on your show, some fucking fire shit is All about right, to go let, down. Let's hear it, Mr. GM Saul Bookman. What do you got for us? a phenomenal, phenomenal shirt. Okay. That is ready to be released. Are well, you guys ready for it? I want to see it. Let's see it. Let's go. Drum roll, please. The what? Hollywood Hot shirt. Damn. Let's go. Look at that. So we have been teasing this shirt for upwards of two to three weeks. Apparently, the GM Saul Bookman says it's time to release it to the masses. <laughs> In my opinion, this is the baddest, best shirt that we've ever done at the PHNX Merchandise Locker. Hollywood Hills taking back Camelback. Bo mm. Brock, what do you think of this tee? I think that's the most gorgeous thing these eyes have ever seen outside of my beautiful wife at home. But mm, no, okay. this okay. Say it like you say it. Camelback mm. Mountain with the Hollywood sign. Woo! You got kind of the state flag flavoring in there. I mean, that's tough to beat. I think we've goaded our uh, PHNX locker with this shirt. How about this super chat from Redbirds224. Damn, I wish I was there. Repping ATL Bird Game. Well, hell yeah, my man. Well, you can go over to the PHNX Merchandise Locker, cop this shirt now, and be a part of the PHNX Brethren. Even though you're not here in Phoenix, you're with us nonetheless. We've got some other good comments here. Oh, man, I need that. I live in Hollywood, badass. Mm. Hollywood Hills here in AZ. Frank Sanders, you love to see it. Love the shirt, man. I love, I love what we're doing for him, though, honestly, because mm -hmm. I believe that we, PHNX is literally counting him to be a thousand yard receiver or more a, a true a, a true impact to what is going to make this offense go yeah um, i'm looking forward to it the shirt's fire i like it i like the raise what what he brings to the table look we gave up something for him 
and we're looking for a lot of great production from him. So I look forward to seeing him become the guy and the star that he wants to be in the desert. Mike Mayers, I need a Frank Sanders jersey. I think we all do. Uh, that You know, all those old jerseys I used to buy, the Rydell jerseys or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, were oversized. Rydell. Yeah. Yep. So uh, the best news about this. The sleeves was, that would go past yeah. your elbow. The, P, the PHNX. Swim in those things. Yes. The PHNX tees, they are smooth. Uh, they are easy to wear. Lightweight fabric. Again, yes. you can get that new T-shirt at the Hollywood Hills in Camelback right now at the PHNX Merchandise Locker. We got a ton of cards to talk about, but we also, gentlemen, need to talk about the DraftKings Sportsbook app because the wait is almost over. A new football season is about to begin. You can gamble on the Arizona Cardinals next weekend at uh, taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. And gentlemen, you'll find this uh, very amusing. I was helping my father, uh, who is in his late 60s, love him to death, hi dad, uh, with his <laughs> DraftKings Sportsbook account the other night and popping in that promo code PHNX to get a $200 free bet instantly. I'm not sure if you put that money on the cards money line, but we will see. So get ready. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use that promo code PHNX. It's real. It's fantastic. Get $200 in free bets instantly when you place a $5 bet on any football game. It can be pro. It can be college, Mac, Mountain West, whatever you want. That's promo code PHNX only at the DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See those show notes for details, Bo. I'd be remiss not to mention that uh, one of our favorite viewers, listeners, Chris, was our Toast of the Month sweepstakes winner. Mm -hmm. Congratulations to Chris, who is here. Big time, big time dub for Chris. You can be the next one. Just go enter to win at gophnx.com. You can win September. That's going to be amazing. Also, enjoy yourself some Four Peaks anytime you want. Come down here to the 8th Street location. Join us for our last... Wednesday broadcast, but you can also win yourself that $50 Four Peaks gift card. You can get that PHNX shirt, make yep. it the Hollywood shirt, yep. and then also that PHNX annual membership. Great big things coming to the site, great insight. You want to check it out, go phnx.com. But as far as Four Peaks, you know, Johnny enjoys some nice, delicious chicken tendies. Producer like, Emma left some yeah. for me. Uh, yeah. Not really for me. She hadn't eaten them yet, and then I ate them. I wasn't while she going to was tell the audience that that you were you were eating her scraps, um, but you know. So I'm here to eat your food if you want to come to Four Peaks. <laughs> when you maybe go to the bathroom or you're you're at the bar, I'll be sure to come by and eat your food. We got Johnny dumpster diving in the back here. Look out for Time, him. Times are tough, man. I got to save my coin for some PHNX merchandise right. locker gear. But come down here, have a beer. You got to be 21 years or older. Enjoy responsibly, and let's do it right now. As we're we're kind of toasting right now, let's toast a true legend of the game, one that played the same position as our guy Frank Sanders, Larry Fitzgerald, Larry Legend, 39th birthday. Happy, birthday, happy birthday, B -day. B day. Guy had two tutties in the Super Bowl, including the go-ahead touchdown. The offense for the Cardinals left the field leading that game. 23-20, correct? Yep, yep. And then no, Antonio no, Holmes talk about that. allegedly toe-tapped. Then but the game was over. Larry Legend, I mean, the, that postseason, I, nobody's come close to it right now. It was unbelievable what he did. Uh, but his career, you know, second in receptions all time, second in receiving yards all time. Frank, you got some nuggets about Larry Fitz on his 39th birthday. Larry had 16 quarterbacks. I'm sorry, what? 16 <laughs> quarterbacks. I had seven. Larry played 17 seasons. I played nine. Ooh. Larry had 121 touchdowns. I had 24. Wow. Larry caught 67 touchdowns, bro. How many touchdowns From would you days. have with Kyler Murray, by the way? Oh, with Kyler, I don't know. I love it. Don't give me Kyler. <laughs> okay. Give me, give me Kurt Warner and Carson Palmer. Okay. Yeah. He had 67 touchdowns from just those two alone out of the 16 quarterbacks he played with. Look, the longevity is always impressive in the NFL because you guys know we talk about it's two years to three years, probably the max. But what Larry was able to do here and, and what he was able to produce is absolutely amazing. And every accolade as that, that comes to him is so deserving. But even more, everyone always says it, as a person, you're just not going to find anything, you know, anything more pure than him when it comes to him just as a man. I mean, he's looking up really at only one guy in Jerry Rice on almost every major statistical category for wide receivers. But, you know, like Rice... Like, he had to go to different places to extend his career. Like, he had a, he played for the Raiders at one point. He played for the Seahawks that randomly, right? Yeah. Larry Fitz never did that. He did it here, and, and I really respect that. One of the craziest stat, Frank Sanders, though, it's still, it's the GOAT Fitz stat, is that he had more career tackles than pass drops. <laughs> 
Are you about kidding as good me? As it gets. That's Are you insane. for real? That's insane. He like had more sig- career? I significantly I, more. I, I think he had like 41 tackles, and he had 29 pass drops. The Cardinals have a wow. history of just tremendous wide receivers, whether it be the gentleman to my right here, Larry Fitzgerald, and Quan Bolton, somebody who's trying to fall suit in that great line of receivers, Bo Brock is the second round pick from last year, Rondell Moore, who ups and downs as a rookie, started fast and then faded due to injury. And unfortunately, Bo, he's going into a critical year. He's going to see a lot of Christian Kirk's targets. But right now, Rondell Moore not practicing with an injury. What do you have yeah, for us? We don't, we, don't have, we don't know what the injury is. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is a guy that hasn't played significant snaps really since 2018, where he broke out for Purdue. Had a monster season, put himself on the map, and you know, which got him to his second round pick. But we saw him last year. We saw him, you know, really through a couple games. You know, certainly against Tennessee, and then of course a huge game against the uh, the Vikings, where he had the big 70 plus yard touchdown score. But we haven't seen enough from Rondell Moore, and, and what the, the biggest thing that's going to keep him from producing at this level is just getting on the day. now, like seeing this this close to the season where this team has kind of wrapped their stars in bubble wrap. Yeah. And, and him still facing injuries, it's it's kind of a tough look for the Cardinals and especially the second-year player. Frank, are you concerned about his lack of size? Because that was one of the knocks on him. He is undersized, and you figure he's built like a tank, but he's only, what, 5'10", 5'9 and a half. This is somebody the Cardinals are counting on. Do you think he can keep up with the rigors of a 17-game season? I, what I am surprised, I'm, su- I'm surprised the fact that, as Bo <laughs> eloquently said it, they're, everyone's in bubble wrap. Yeah. Like they're not even tackling. They're not hitting. They're not touching the ground. Right. There is no, there's no real jamming and, sh- and shoving and pushing and falling from injuries that could that can come from that part of the, of the game. These guys are walking around in shells and baby helmets and, and little you know little little league stuff that yeah, doesn't right. make sense. So there's something going on in his training. And I gotta say this just from a broad perspective. When you look at our injury list, again the same thing. There's not a lot of tackling. There's no hitting. There's no contact. And it's very limited a level of play, but all these guys are coming with these injuries, so I, you, I, I'm, I'm concerned about their training. I'm not concerned about when he gets on the field and when he's healthy. Yeah. I'm not when it, when it he, comes to Rondell Moore. He can flat out play. This is the guy that was just one of the top receivers, you know, statistical across the board, but what he's been able to do in producing in the NFL, and just this season coming into this year, yeah. we're talking about injuries. It's, it's blowing my mind for a guy who, who in practice they're not tackling and and these guys are really getting a lot of passes. We were talking about it before the show, Bo Brock. Like, if, if Rondell Moore is shelved for week one, and we've got a long way to go before that Easy. happens, you're talking about no DeAndre Hopkins, potentially Rondell Moore compromise. It will be Hollywood Brown, who is new to this offense. He's yeah. not new to Kyler Murray. They are best friends. But then you've got A.J. Green, who is uh, a million years old, starting at the wide receiver. And then it's like Greg Dorch, Andy Isabella, yeah. Antoine Wesley's trying to come back from that groin injury. A strength can easily become a liability. I think that's why they are so keen on keeping six receivers right now. Yeah, they're not messing with that. They didn't do any roster maneuvering like we saw with the long snapping position that Cliff Kingsbury pretty much was like, yeah, that's what we were doing. Bingo. We we were, you know, we're going to see Aaron Brewer back on this roster. We just knew, you know, nobody's going to go hot for a long snapper (laughs) as far as the NFL waiver claims go. But no, I mean, it is something that can quickly, and this happens all the time in the NFL, you have a guy until you don't, yeah. you know? And, and as far as Rondell Moore, uh, yeah, I, I see picking spreads in there, and, and I agree with you. Like, I, it, it's day-to-day, but, like, they're starting to add up. I mean, Zach Ertz is day-to-day with a calf. Marcus Golden is day-to-day with a toe injury, allegedly. I don't know if he's got that DJ Is it Humphreys. a toe injury or is it a wallet injury <laughs> and he wants more coin? It's a wallet. A DJ it's definitely Humphreys. a wallet injury. I yeah. know that for a fact. It's a so, wallet. I mean, there's there's three, you know, two keys of your offense yeah. that uh, could potentially be on the shelf. They want to get them back to practice by next week, gear them up for the Chiefs because, you know, they haven't as far as action is concerned, they've barely seen much practice. Rondell Moore saw some early on. Like, Zach Hurts, we haven't seen since week one of training camp. It's been a long time. See, that doesn't concern me as much because he's a veteran. He was a seamless integration last year when they traded for him, and then he turned right around against Houston, had that big game. I am willing, Frank Sanders, to give the benefit of the doubt to Rodney Hudson, Justin Pugh, Zach Ertz, guys who have been there, done that. I feel like when push comes to shove, they're going to be there on September 11th. Rondell Moore, like, this is your second year, man. You should be hitting your stride right now and counting on a player that is going to replace Christian Kirk that the offense is at times going to run through. To me, I just feel a little uneasy for a guy that, number one, has not been healthy since 2018, 
and then just has not played a full season yet. I mean, say what you want about Christian Kirk. And he has his liabilities, and he has his fault. He got a ton of money from Jacksonville. You can argue if it was warranted or not. Christian was a healthy player. Like, for the most part, he may yes. have disappeared in games in the second half of the season. By and large, he was a healthy player that you could count on to be active on game day. I hope this is not happening with Rondell Moore where it's like, is he going to play? Is he a liability? Is it a Percy Harvin 2.0? Uh, oh, that's I, a great call. I don't, <laughs> but he, you know, these that's undersized receivers, call. I need him to be built call. like Trey Sanders. You Percy, hope it's thanks, not. Man. Yeah, you well, hope Percy, it's not a great call. That's a great call because Percy was like, Absolutely phenomenal once he was on the field. Yeah. Of course, he had concussions at the end, which was just. I mean, he had migraines it, too, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, come from the, he had a couple of concussions that ended up, mm. that migraine started lingering, which you, it just it, it messed him up really bad. But I will say this here, though. I have to believe that he will be ready. And watch this here. I'll give you guys a little secret that it happened on September 11th. Okay. They're going to walk in there. Yeah. They're going <laughs> to drop their britches. Okay. They're going to say <laughs> left leg back. Uh -oh. Give them a little skin skin. Oh, no. <laughs> and then they go back and say, You want to get hit? <laughs> Tackle me. Let's go. Oil them up, right? Ha, 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 let's go. And then the game will be over, and then he'll be like, I can't practice this week. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what happens. <laughs> he'll be okay. I'm with you, Johnny. Don't worry about it. He'll be fine. I, you know, we, we talk about our, our incredible new shirt, you know, Hollywood sign on Camelback Mountain. And we yeah. talk about somebody who was acquired by this team, Marquise Brown. Yeah. Uh, you know, as far as what you want to see from him, it, it works, especially the first six weeks. Something that he never really had outside of Mark Andrews in Baltimore is, you know, another threat out there as far as the pass game goes, like as far as the receiving core. Uh, and you don't want that to be limited because you already are handicapped so much without having DeAndre Hopkins. You want to be at close to full strength. We know you're not going to be at full strength because the NFL sucks and they're too black and white as far as what's a suspension and what's not. Uh, they need... You know, to be they need Rondell Moore out there to play the role that they envisioned him playing, and what this wide receiver core or receiving core with Zach Ertz is going to look like uh, without DeAndre Hopkins and Hollywood Brown playing that number one wide receiver. It only works, I think, in what they envision with those other guys there. I'm going to say that's the magic elixir for this team: is Hollywood Brown is going to show up for the Arizona Cardinals for the first four to six weeks. No DeAndre Hopkins question marks up and down this receiving core, and I think. That young man, his rapport with Kyler Murray, the relationship that they have is going to steer this team through a difficult stretch of games. I, I think Hollywood Brown, you stole him, by the way, in our I fantasy did. draft that we had yesterday. Right before I flip and picked, he took Hollywood Brown. And then right before I picked a quarterback, Kyler Murray was stolen by our own Michaela. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm very upset about that. But Hollywood Brown, nonetheless, I expect him. If you're betting on overs on DraftKings, bet the over on Hollywood Brown. I envision him having... 12, 13, 1,400 yards this year for the Arizona Cardinals. The deep threat that this team has has really never had for Kyler Murray. With all due respect to Christian Kirk, he could take the defense over the top, but it wasn't a stretch to then stretch it to the end zone, right? Rondell Moore, too banged up. Hollywood Brown is the first true deep threat, the first 4-2-5 guy that translates on the football field that we've seen it in Baltimore. Frank Sanders, I believe they're going to feed him early and often. I think they're going to be taking full advantage of a questionable secondary in Kansas City. And I, I think we're all going to be sitting here in two weeks from now talking about how this is a masterful, masterful trade by Steve Kime to secure Hollywood Brown. I agree with you 100% on that because I believe that from, a, from a, just a, a flat point of view of looking at it from a, a scheme point that – Every team right now understands that we have one of the best running backs in the league, and that's James. That's James Conn. Yeah, like he he flat out will pound you if you if you dick. I mean, if you if you just mess around. Yeah. in a situation. You got so. Connor right on your team. I did. There yeah, but I, I tried to go all Cardinals in our <laughs> fantasy draft because I think the Cardinals are going to have the best offense okay. in the NFL. Okay, Frank, this year. back to your point. So, I just wanted to make sure. I would draft Frank this guy Sanders was crying about his roster team. You Don't know, his steal roster. my players. Relax. Please. It's okay. <laughs> you got who you got right now. But I believe that. I believe that. Defense is never now going to they're going to bring more pressure up, yeah. And so that's going to allow for the deep for the deep balls to happen with the Hollywood Brown. So you got to look at it from the, the the mindset of what what scheme we have on defense, and then what scheme that defenses have against our offense. We got a great quarterback in Kyler Murray. We got J.C. Zach Ertz, and so we already know that. So we're going to get two down, and they're going to fill they're going to fill that box up, and that's going to leave opportunities for the Hollywood Brown deep threats as well as you know if you, if you find a win and and Rondell Moore is there. 
if I'm Rondell Moore or I'm Hollywood Brown, I'm thinking that's how they're going to play us, and I'm looking for the big play. I just go back. If you guys dare to be brave and turn on that LA Rams playoff game, I haven't watched it too much since that fateful <laughs> January night. But one word comes to mind when I watched the Cardinals that night, slow. They were yeah. too slow offensively. With all due respect yes. to Christian Kirk and yes. A.J. Green and Zach Ertz and James Conner, it was three yards in a cloud of dust. They need separators. That's why it is incredibly important that Rondell Moore be ready to rock and roll. And, and Hollywood Brown and I think Bo, they have put themselves in a position with these vertical pass catchers to make noise here in the NFL in 2022. Yeah, I mean, it's not not quite Big Ten football. It may, maybe it would have been a little bit better if it was a little bit Big Big Ten football with three yards in a cloud of dust. I want though. SEC football, please. <laughs> I want Alabama football. I, you know, but look, I, I think for the first time you're going to see massive separation for Kyler Murray receiver. Like, we, we haven't seen, like, a guy who's, who's a solid route runner who's got speed, the elite speed yeah. for Hollywood Brown. Like, I, I think that Rondell Moore is still developing as a route runner, and we know that DeAndre Hopkins is an elite route runner, but isn't blessed with that 4-2-5 speed. So, you know, I think we're going to see, like, the type of separation that you're used to seeing from the other team that's going to be in the building come week one, and, and that was, like, the Tyreek Hill Patrick Mahomes connection like I think that you're going to see that type of like Hollywood Brown's going to take his speed and he's going to somehow get just wide stupid open on the field and yeah. Kyler Murray's going to have and e make an easy pass. Frank Sanders, we got a great question in the chat from Naj saying are we even confident Cliff Kingsbury is going to use Rondell downfield? We saw the horizontal screen game, the bullshit screens, let's be honest. Yeah. The horizontal passing game. Do you think he's learned his lesson, Cliff Kingsbury? Without a doubt, I think he has. But I think that once you, we have seen that Rondell has grown. Yeah. And so that you, you got to look at it from that perspective. He doesn't have Christian Kirk. So he's the next, he's that guy now. Yeah. And so when we saw Christian Kirk, most of his plays are either uh, shallow shallow crosses or they were deep mm -hmm. deep overs on the football field. Yeah. And he has some corner routes in the, in the backside, 18 to 25 yards. So that's there for him. Uh, and that's his position to take right now. Um, I like to see that. I think that Cliff will be much better just as a coach overall. Look, I think that's, that's the beauty of it. But I will add this one caveat. And the caveat is that Kyler Murray will be better. Like, he was the guy calling the plays. Yeah. We, we, we just watched that, like, the last couple of weeks, him calling plays. So we can see that he's taking on the mindset and taking ownership of the offense. And I think that he will understand exactly 100% what the NFL is trying to do to stop him. And when he realizes that, he'll find out that they have weaknesses, too, to stop him, and then he'll make his plays. Kiro in the chat says, Peter Schrager, who is close with, with Cliff Kingsbury, said that Cliff told him that Rondell was going to have a huge downfield role this year. Uh, I trust him. I yeah. trust uh, Peter Schrager, and I trust all of you right now to go to gophnx.com, go to that PHNX merchandise locker, become a member today. 99 cents for the first month, $8.99 for the subsequent month. And you know, Bo, I'm enjoying this Four Peaks beverage. I'm all out. <laughs> should I dabble with some OGs yeah, at I some think, point? I think you should. I mean, we just gave away our first Flavoring Life sweepstakes winner. Congratulations. But uh, of course, OGs is Arizona's Cannabis Kitchen. Mm, you know, that, that, that winner is getting not one, not two, but three bags yep. of their delicious gummies, including Frank's favorite, Orm's Creamsicle, or yep. any of their tropical flavors. You can find them online, ogsbrands.com. That's ogsbrands.com. Find them on Instagram as well. you got to be 21 years or older. And also, we got to talk about these Hertz donuts that were fueling us before the show. Left? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's got a cool VHS. I did not know that. Yeah, oh, you didn't know we had no. some delicious oh, Hertz go. donuts oh, in front of us? Oh, you know about that life. Yeah. Oh. There it is right there in front of you as Frank oh, gobbles one down. Goodness. They've got a great buy one, get one free uh, <laughs> round of donuts for the next two weeks at their Tempe location. So go, uh, you know, maybe check out a Sun Devils win tomorrow night Woo, and then get yourself Herm. buy one, get one. We need it, Herm. You play to win the game. That's yeah, right. And donuts. We play for donuts, too. Frank, Frank Sanders, what do you drink? Is that is that double chocolate with a little caramel? This is double chocolate. That'll with get you through Hertz, your afternoon. Like Hertz heat bar. There you go. That'll get oh you a heat bar. That's, yeah. I'm in for that. I'm into that. I'm also into Sorry, the yeah. 11 players announced to the Arizona Cardinal practice squad. <laughs> Here's some good news, or if you want to look at it like that, the Arizona Cardinals cut a bunch of players yesterday, yeah. but all your faves from the preseason seemingly made it back to the practice squad, headlined by linebacker extraordinaire from the <laughs> SEC, Auburn standout Chandler Wooten, who a lot of us were like, oh shit, yeah, don't cut Chandler Wooten. Frank's alma mater, he's back on the practice squad. Jace Whitaker, Antoine Woods, Trace McSorley. Trace, he'll be, he'll be yes. stashed just in case yes. we need him. Uh, Victor Bolden <laughs> Jr., 
Manny Jones, Rashad Coward, but I think they're the, the big three. I would go Chandler Wooten, Trace McSorley, and Manny Jones. Manny Jones was fantastic during the preseason, stash him on the practice squad. Let's start with Chandler Wooten, Bo Brock. He is somebody that every fourth quarter of the preseason racked up five, six, seven tackles, was all over the football. And here's what I will say. The Cardinals outside of Zayvon Collins do not have an instinctual inside linebacker. You might argue Zayvon's not this. A, a true inside linebacker on their team. With all due respect to Nick Vigil and Tanner Vallejo and company, when I watch Chandler Wooten play, is he the fastest guy? No, I think he ran a 4.840 at the combine. But the instincts of an inside linebacker, it's evident. And that's why I'm optimistic that hopefully this time next year, he's making that jump to the active roster and pushing for playing time on Sundays. Yeah, I, mean, I think that all the inside linebackers that you mentioned are known for something other than what you know inside linebackers for, yeah. right? You, you want guys to go in there and get dirty, right? And start just start hitting people. And, and that's what Wooten showed that he could do. You know, the, the, the clip from Brian Baldinger that pointed out, you know, he's a guy that's going to go make some contact and just kind of make contact to get to a ball carrier. And you like it, right? And I think it's great that he was able to slide through. And that's usually how things work as far as these practice squads. Like, a lot of teams, they, they found these guys. They selected them. They picked them up as undrafted free agents. They want to keep their guys. Yeah. So, for the most part, there's not too much – there's not too many moving pieces as far as practice squads go. So the fact that you can get some familiar names and you can continue to develop these guys that you kind of went to battle with in the preseason and training camp, it's great. It's great for Chandler Wooten. It's great for Manny Jones. I see a lot of people excited about Manny Jones, a Colorado State product, you know, more known for his Kyler Murray impression, but then made a name <laughs> for himself from some TFLs. So it's, it's, it's a nice squad. You know, I see some guys that if they're in a pinch, you know, on the D-line with Jones, at the linebacker position with Wooten, you know, on the offensive line with Coward, or at the, let's see, we're looking at uh, wide receiver, John Shea Kirkland, who could play teams and caught a couple touchdowns. Well, He's think, on the team. I think we're going to be sitting here 24 hours from now. Christian Matthews, who was cut today yeah. for their newest addition in the secondary with uh, Gildry, mm -hmm. I think he'll be back. So one of these faithful names on the practice squad, 11, will probably won't be back. But, Frank, talk to me about the importance of the practice well, you squad. you get 16, don't you? You get 16? Yeah. yeah. You get 16 and not 11. So yeah, hopefully they don't, they yeah, don't have they're to not release done. anybody. And they added a, a safety who was just with Dallas. Who, who He's incoming too. So that's tw uh, – and then you got Sykovitz, the – the exempt guy you yeah. know, from, from Germany, and yeah. then you got yourself a couple more. Loading up on tight ends. Yeah. But practice squad players, you consider they're part of the team. It's interchangeable, right? Well, they are. Um, uh, just what I, I will say about this is that a practice squad guy is a guy that I think that he's he won was liked. Yeah. But I can say about the guys that we have on our practice squad that we have this year, the guys you just named, I, I will say that they actually performed. Yeah. Like, you got a chance to watch them in – real lifetime actually play like three four quarters of, of football yep. you know, on, on the nfl level typically in the past you guys and you guys know that that wasn't the case and so I, I like that they actually have some actual time in it so look a lot of guys on practice squad like a, like a guy like wooden could be a guy they can bring up contractually his financially right now he it doesn't it wouldn't make sense yeah unless somebody got hurt then it would make sense but you got a guy you can de develop there's certain things that guys that are on the practice squad they do well They'll, they'll also do something that most people don't think about is that they will be the guys that will be the scout team yeah. for your defense yeah. or your offense. And so these guys got to kind of be interchangeable in some ways as, as well. But these are the guys you can trust that will give you a good showing as while they're developing uh, through, through practice. Yeah, Wooten always reminds me of a guy like Gerald Hayes who's not going to flash you with his speed or maybe make all the flashy plays, but played college ball at a high level. And it just those instincts translate and I, hopefully he's going to be a fixture on the practice squad and, and makes a name for himself. Bo, if I had to name one player on the practice squad that has an opportunity to make noise on the 53 this year, who would you go with? Uh, probably a guy like Jesse Lucetta, right? Somebody who almost made the team, yeah. somebody that impressed in training camp, uh, almost was on the final 53, and, and his name was unfortunately called when they made the deal for Trayvon Mullen. Lucetta is a guy who, you know, when you're unless somebody really takes hold of a pass rush role, you know, from Gardek to Duma KG to the two third rounders, you know, there could be opportunities for a guy like Luketa. And, you know, you racking up a sack, if you can be singular minded as far as what you need to do out there on the field, 
I think that Lucetta can make some some noise in, in whatever limited opportunities he's get he gets. But uh, nice to see Victor Bolden Jr. You felt for that guy. He yep. missed a, a touchdown catch in week two of the preseason against the Ravens that could have boosted his stock, and then he muffed a punt too the, the following week. But it, it really kind of it kind of sullied a, a really solid performance, you know, training camp in, in the preseason for him. So I'm glad that he's there. And don't cry for these guys. Do you know how much they make? Practice squad? Yeah, yeah I do. And it's, it's, hella, it's a lot. Well, let me do this here. <laughs> when, it, when, when I was playing, practice squad was maxed out at 52,000. Wow. What's, what is it now? It's uh, you can if you're Slightly on the more than if you're on the practice squad for 18 weeks, you're making over 200k. Pretty good. And Pretty if, good. If you have, if you got in the three years, if you've recured three years, if you're a vet, you can negotiate up to fifteen thousand dollars per week as a practice squad. Yeah, member. can that get you something decent? In Scottsdale <laughs> Paradise Valley. We'll see. Maybe Cliff can find you a good realtor here. You can find our products at gophnx.com, phnx merchandise locker. Do me a favor. We're going to be hanging out all season long. Tailgates. We got a home tailgate coming up at the Lola. Producer Emma we've got a fancy graphic with that coming up here, but. To ensure that you're happy and healthy, go get a COVID-19 vaccine. They're free for everybody five and older. Those 12 and older are also eligible for a booster. Visit azhealth.gov slash find vaccine for a location near you. And while Emma's grabbing that sweet graphic for me, I want to talk gentlemen quickly because we get asked a lot, why aren't the Cardinals spending more, right? Trayvon Mullen comes over. He's worth $2.5 million against the cap. Cardinals still have roughly $15 million to play around with. Why isn't Ndamukong Sue on this team? Why isn't Joe Hayden on this team, right? So, Bo Brock, like, contextualize this because I want to know, if I'm a fan, why aren't the Cardinals adding all these free agents yeah. 10 day, days before the season that can help them against Patrick Mahomes and company? Make I, it make sense. I, I mean, I've, I've been against, especially Ndamukong Sue. I just think he's 35 years old. He's made his NFL millions. He's got his ring. What kind of uh, incentive does he have to come play hard for this Arizona Cardinals team? I, I, I don't. I don't think Sue is the answer. You know, Joe Hayden has, hasn't been the same guy. Everybody wants to know about Joe Hayden, right? Where everybody is Joe Hayden? does. It's a, it's a recognizable game, name. It was a guy that when you talked about Patrick Peterson, mm -hmm. there was Joe Hayden quickly behind him as far as one of the top corners in the league, and that's a position where guys' productivity falls off a cliff. Unfortunately, it's fast. a young man's position, yeah. and I, you know. I put it out there today, like the oldest guy in that room, it potentially is Antonio Hamilton if he gets back. He's 29, but everybody else is 25 and younger. I mean, it's a young man's game. I mean, you, you lose, you know, obviously the ability to have the whole bag of tricks, right, where you can play the angles and, and you know how to, if you're going up against a vet receiver, they're not going to dupe you in the, in the certain ways that Frank Sanders probably duped a lot of young corners back a in lot. his day. But uh, yeah, a lot. A lot. I, I just don't think that, you know, Steve Kahn views this as kind of his money ball position where he's going to go young and he's going to bet on, you know, uh, potential yeah. and development. And the, VJ, that's his, the name of his game is developing young guys. And I think that's what they're going to go off of. I don't think they want Joe Hayden for his fourth team, right? He's 33 years old. According to PR Mac in the chat, Dominic Sue wants $9 million minimum a year. That's why, quote, he's watching games. Well said. Although if you put on the Los Angeles Rams divisional round, he was an ass kicker in that game. So that I mean, if you could get in Dominic for the right price, uh, I would say but yes. But you might please. only get him for three games, though. Yeah, and he, he you might just business get like, decision, <laughs> right? Three, three or four games. <laughs> That's just it's not. It might be I worth mean, it. I saw I saw a tweet from Dominic Sue earlier or during training camp, basically talking about entrepreneurial stuff. Like he, that was he, the Devon Kennard route. Yeah, He's no I mean, it's just here. it's the, you want guys that want to <laughs> stick in the NFL and make a name for themselves. I just think that you're better served, you know, seeing what. If, if it's not the current group, you got Manny Jones, and if it's not, then they're going to be some teams that are going to start 0-3, and, and then you just pick you know, players from those rosters before the trade deadline. Yeah, I think that's more likely. Steve Kime loves to flip picks for players as the season progresses. If this team looks like garbage up front on the line of scrimmage, best yeah. believe he'll go get a defensive lineman. Maybe he'll get an edge rusher. We're waiting for Marcus Golden to get his payday, and we're waiting for you to liking and subscribing this PHNX Cardinals podcast. And now we have that sweet, sweet graphic of the Lola. We're coming to you live. Cardinals hosting Kansas City, the official PHNX Cardinals tailgate, the best tailgate in the Valley. Just $20? Hell yeah, you get 20, 20 bucks. bucks. All the Four wow. Peaks beer. I just paid mm. 6 bucks, which is a good deal <laughs> for a while. You can get that yeah. and more for just 20 bucks. September 11th, 10 a.m., right after our tailgate show, right before Cardinals kicks off. 
Uh, we're going to be so excited to welcome you myself, Frank Sanders, Damian Anderson, Bo Brock, before he dabbles over to the stadium, yeah. before we have to let no him go. No white girl wasted for me. I can't have all that, you know, $20 he'll, he'll of free with beer. His, his iced tea, unsweetened <laughs> iced tea, his bottle of water. Frank and I will be down and wow. We'll yes. be getting ready for an ass kicking of the Kansas City Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. Do not miss it. Get your tickets now. 20 bucks. You can't beat that if you're thinking to yourself, we're going to watch this game. Come watch it with us because guess what, fam? We're doing this every single home game. And uh, we can't be more excited about right. it. Right, yeah, and our guy Troy from Four Peaks already saying, hey, you got to try that new Oktoberfest tap Woo! at Four Peaks. It's You can't mess with that. The pumpkin, it's obviously, here is unbelievable. Beer. Yeah, it's it is. It's delicious. I mean, it's it's time to put on the Uggs. It's time to turn <laughs> everything pumpkin, and uh, is including the beer. And nobody does it better than Four Peaks. Nobody does tailgates better than PHNX. Cannot wait for it. We're excited. You should be excited, too. Frank Sanders, Bo Brock, we're hanging here live at Four Peaks. We're getting ready. We're only, what, 10 days away from the Arizona Cardinals. We can finally put this offseason to bed. We're almost a week away from the NFL wow. season kicking off. I know. Buff a week from tomorrow. Buffalo, the L.A. Rams. Damn it, those Rams. Let's next, go, Bills. Next Thursday. Yeah, that's right. Josh Allen, MVP train. Outside hey, did you see that the, uh, the Niners just released the third-round pick today? Trace, Trace Sermon. <laughs> yes, See, right. It's not only Steve Kime that misses on picks. And guess what? You know who doesn't look great? Trey Lance. Who, you know who called that, by the yeah. way? This guy right here. You don't bring Jimmy Garoppolo, Frank Sanders, <laughs> back from the dead if you feel like Trey Lance is going to set the world on fire. That's good news if you're an Arizona Cardinal fan that the Niners just spent three first-round picks on a guy. North Dakota State, come on. We should have seen this coming, right? You definitely called it. <laughs> Got up on his soapbox and exclaimed, I, it. "He was, he can't he throw was the at football. the top of the Camelback Mountain, screaming at anybody that would listen to him." They're going to run the RG three <laughs> offense, which tells yes, you that I they will. do not they do not trust him to throw yeah. the football. Can you believe this whole thing in San Francisco? It's 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 great to watch. I got the popcorn out. I'm I'm reading my timeline every day, just seeing the latest just trash coming out of that franchise. And you know what? Still, the pundits are still going to pick them over the Cardinals, and, and I love it. You know, I think that Cliff Kingsbury and crew need to use that. Uh, for Bolton board material because you know, as far as you know, playmakers and especially at the quarterback position, which is numero uno as far as top positions in all of sports, the Cardinals have that checked off. The, the Niners are big question mark. Uh, but I guess they brought Jimmy G. I mean, of the three wins that Ke Shanahan has against the Cardinals, three out of, what, 14 tries? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two of them are Jimmy G, yeah. right? So you got to go with, go with the, what works. Took the L last year, did Jimmy G against our guy Colt McCoy in November. Scream it from the top of Camelback yes. Mountain. Trey Lance is a bus. Speaking of Camelback Mountain, we've got a brand new shirt. We're going to plug one more time. Hot damn, look at this. Hollywood sign atop Camelback. Get it right now. The PHNX Merchandise Locker. The best flipping Arizona Cardinal shirt in the Valley, bar none. Everything else is just pretenders, gentlemen. Get this right now. Link is in the description below. It's all over Twitter. Everybody go and quick do me a favor. Like this video. It helps the YouTube algorithm. We are putting a bow, ladies and gentlemen, on our best month to date here at PHNX Cardinals. Yes. And that's because of all of you as we get geared up mm -hmm. for the September 11th kickoff. Kansas City Chiefs at Arizona Cardinals. We'll, we'll be back tomorrow. Yes, we will. 4 p.m. live PHNX Cardinals. Be sure to like, subscribe, leave us a five-star review wherever you get your podcast. For the great Frank Sanders, Bull Brock, I'm Johnny Venerable. See you tomorrow live from Four Peaks. Peace.